Hi, I'm Claire Ridgeway. I'm the founder of the Amber Limfiles website. I'm sure you know me by now. I'm here answering your questions about Amber Lynn. Now today I'm looking at the question, did Amber Lynn get sweating sickness? I mean, there's the bit in the Tudors series, the Showtime series, the Tudors, where, you know, Anne does suffer from sweating sickness. And I've been asked, you know, did Anne actually really suffer from sweating sickness? Well, yes is the short answer. So now I've answered that, you can go away if you've got better things to do. But I'm sure you want me to delve a bit deeper into it. So sweating sickness, this strange illness that... Um, there were outbreaks in England in 1485, 1508, 1517, 1528 and 1551. And I'll give you a link to my video. I've actually done a video on sweating sickness and the various theories regarding what it actually was because it disappeared and nobody actually knows what on earth it was. It was the Tudors described it as being very different from anything else. So it wasn't something that they'd known before. So it's a very strange illness, but I'll give you a link to find out more about it. It was known as sweating sickness, the sweat, the English sweat, and various other names. But to suffice to say that as well as being a strange illness, it was actually a very dangerous illness. It could kill very quickly, so it caused panic. In 1517, chronicler Edward Hall recorded that this malady was so cruel that it killed some within three hours, some within two hours, some merry at dinner and dead at supper. So that speed, you know, you can see why people panicked about it. And Hall goes on to say that it killed many at the royal court, and that was in the 1517 outbreak. So a very serious and a very frightening illness. So panic gripped King Henry VIII when it hit England once again in his reign in May and June 1528, when he was courting his sweetheart Anne Boleyn. On the 18th of June 1528, Jean du Bellay, the French ambassador, reported that one of Anne's ladies, one of her household, had come down with the sweat. And um, Anne um, fled from court to get away from it, to sort of go into, um, well, yeah, just to get away from it because it was in London, but it didn't seem to be in Kent. So she went to her family home of Hever Castle in Kent to try and save herself. Um, her sweetheart, the king, so obviously it, it was now at the royal court, he fled from the court in London with his wife, Catherine of Aragon, because at this point, you know, he, she was still publicly his wife, although he was committed to Anne Boleyn and had proposed to her. And the royal couple fled to Waltham Abbey and then on to various other safe houses to try and get away from the disease. And you can't blame them. I mean, panic was, had gripped the royal court. It was such a scary illness. You know, people died very quickly of it. The king wrote to Anne Boleyn of his worry for her health and his relief that she hadn't come down with the sweat. He wrote, The doubt I had of your health troubled me extremely, and I should scarcely have had any quiet without knowing the certainty. But since you have felt nothing, I hope it is with you as with us. When we were at Waltham, two ushers, two valets de chambre, your brother, Master Jessencray, the treasurer, fell ill and are now quite well, and we have since removed to Hunsdon, where we are very well without one sick person. I think if you would retire from Surrey, as we did, you would avoid all danger. Another thing may comfort you. Few women have this illness, and moreover, none of our court, and few elsewhere have died of it. I beg you, therefore, not to distress yourself at our absence, for whoever strives against fortune is often the further from his end. So there you've got Henry VIII trying to reassure Anne, you know, saying that not many women, you know, seem to go down with the disease and he's sure that she'll be okay. 
And as you heard there, he also mentions Anne's brother George as becoming ill at Waltham, but, you know, reassuring her that George, like some of the others, um, have, you know, recovered well. But Anne didn't stay free from the illness. She came down with the sweat while she was at Hever Castle, along with her father, Thomas Boleyn. Henry VIII received news of Anne coming down with sweating sickness and he was panicked. He sent her a letter along with sending her his second best physician, Dr William Butts. Here's his letter. There came to me suddenly in the night the most afflicting news that could have arrived. The first to hear of the sickness of my mistress, whom I esteem more than all the world, and whose health I desire as I do my own, so that I would gladly bear half your illness to make you well. The second, from the fear that I have of being still longer harassed by my enemy, absence, much longer, who has hitherto given me all possible uneasiness, and as far as I can judge, is determined to spite me more, because I pray God to rid me of this troublesome tormentor. The third, because the physician in whom I have the most confidence is absent at the very time when he might do me the greatest pleasure, for I should hope by him and his means to obtain one of my chief joys on earth, that is, the care of my mistress. Yet for want of him I send you my second, and hope that he will soon make you well. I shall then love him more than ever. I beseech you to be guided by his advice in your illness. In so doing, I hope soon to see you again, which will be to me a greater comfort than all the precious jewels in the world. Written by that secretary who is and forever will be your loyal and most assured servant. And he signs um, the letter off by writing Henry Rex, Henry the King, with the initials, with Anne's initials, A.B., inside a heart he's drawn a heart and he's put the heart between the words Henry and Rex I do love that it just seems so very uh schoolboyish so there he's saying that you know he's he's panicked by by the news of her sickness and he wishes that he could bear half her illness uh you know to to make her better um that he's not coping with being absent from her and that he's just devastated that he can't send his best physician with his physician being absent at the moment, that he could only send his second best physician to make her better. Now, his mental state is shown very clearly in this letter. And author Sandra Vasoli, um, who saw the letter in the flesh in the Vatican archives, describes the letter compared to Henry's other letters to Anne and other letters that he wrote as visually a mess. The ink is smeared. There are sprays of ink where the nib of the quill caught on the parchment. There are ink blots. There is all sorts. It is evidence of the king rushing to write this letter, the king's sheer terror at knowing his sweetheart may die. This illness could kill in just a couple of hours and Anne has got the sweating sickness. The letter's appearance, it speaks volumes in a way that Henry's words can't really show. And I'm going to actually show you a picture of this letter. Bear with me. I've got this book, which is actually a German book. Um, it's got photos of the letters. It's got the letters transcribed in their original language, which is either English or French. Henry tended to use French a lot. And then it's got translation into German because it's, it's written for a German audience. But I just want to show you a picture of this letter, which Henry wrote in French. And you can see, I hope you can see, just what a mess it is. It has got bits of really dark, you know, dark blots and smears. And it's written by a man in a hurry, a man who is totally panicked. And it's just, it's amazing as evidence of Henry's love for Anne. I'm trying to find one. This is another letter that he wrote, which is a lot, lot neater. So you could just kind of, you could 
from that letter, you can definitely glean more from the appearance of it than you can from uh, the words. And if anyone's interested in this book, I think I got it from eBay or Abe Books. Um, it is beautiful because of the fact that it's got the transcripts plus photos of them from the Vatican archives, which are just beautiful to see. Now, this 1528 outbreak was particularly severe. At the end of June 1528, Jean du Bellay recorded that 2,000 people had died in the city of London alone. Um, an outbreak at London Charter House, the home of the Carthusian um, monks, had caused many deaths. And du Bellay records that he himself sweated um, at the Archbishop of Canterbury's house in Lambeth. And while he was there, ill with the illness, 18 members of the Archbishop's household died in just four hours. Now, fortunately, Anne Boleyn, as her brother had in Waltham, Anne Boleyn and her father recovered from sweating sickness. But Anne's brother-in-law, William Carey, the husband of Mary Boleyn, was not so lucky. He died of the illness on the 22nd of June 1528, leaving his wife and two children. He wasn't the only member of the King's Privy Chamber to come down with it. On the 30th of June, Dubelay recorded that all but one of the King's Privy Chamber had been afflicted and that William Compton, who was the King's groom of the stall and the King's great friend, had died and also another man, Francis Points. So, you know, members of the King's Privy, Privy Chamber, people that had been close to the King, you know, came down with it and some of them died. So Henry VIII was extraordinarily lucky not to come down with it. Others, including the Marquis, the Marchioness of Dorset, uh, Sir Thomas Cheney, Henry Norris and Sir John Wallop all came down with the sweat but were lucky and survived. The Marchioness of Exeter was recorded as being taken ill with it on the 9th of July. And it's also thought, as we see in Hilary Mantel's um, Wolf Hall, um, we have Thomas Cromwell's family suffering from it. It is thought that um, his wife, Elizabeth, and his daughters, Anne and Grace, died in this outbreak in 1528. We, we don't know for sure, but in 1529, he wrote his will and he referred to his late wife. So Elizabeth was dead by 1529. And his provisions in his will that he'd made previously for his daughters Anne and Grace had been crossed out. So they'd obviously died. Whereas his previous reference in June 1528 to his wife was of her being alive and well. So it is thought that uh, he lost his family in this outbreak, as is shown in the book and the uh, series, the, the adaptation of Wolf Hall. So this was an incredibly frightening time for the royal court and for England as a whole. And Anne Boleyn, her father and her brother, were incredibly lucky to have survived, to have been able to have fought, fought off the illness when people could die just so quickly. I mean, there's another um, temp um, contemporary account which is probably an exaggeration, but it talks about people actually dropping dead in the street as they walked, children dropping dead as they were playing. It was it was very, very scary. I mean, we've only got to think of, of how much panic has been caused by like outbreaks of Ebola and, and things like that. This was very, very scary. So Anne Boleyn did have sweating sickness and she was very, very lucky to have survived it. And Henry VIII was also lucky um, that he didn't come down with it. Anyway, I hope you're enjoying these uh, videos, answering your questions about Anne Boleyn. I do enjoy reading your comments. I'm sorry that I can't, I t don't manage to read quite all of them and I can't respond to all of them. So please, please don't be offended if, if you know, don't think that I've ignored you. I'm really tr not trying to ignore you. I'm just having so many comments. But uh, I do love um, historical debates and I do love, uh, love it when people give me feedback on my videos as well. You can subscribe to the Amberlynn Files and Tudor Society channel by just clicking around there. 
you can hit the bell to be notified as well because I'm going to be doing these uh, questions about Anne Boleyn videos on a regular basis. Anyway, I will see you soon and I hope to be bringing you lots of Tudor information uh, in the future. Remember my On This Day in Tudor History videos too. Take care. Bye bye. <laughs>